Welcome everyone uh, to our webinar uh, on how to use uh, artificial intelligence to build a privacy focused DSP. Uh, I am Greta, account manager at Beeswax, and here today with us we've got Giovanni Sollazzo, ADEM founder and CEO. Hello everybody, nice to meet you. So, uh, Giovanni, let's jump right in. We've got lots of questions coming up. So, first of all, um, before jumping into artificial intelligence, uh, just tell us a little bit more about ADEM. Why did you found it? And how did you conceive the idea of developing the ADEM DSP? Absolutely. Thank you very much, Greta. So, first of all, my official title is CEO. That's a fancy title. Technically, I am the CTO, so I'm in charge of building the technology for IDEM. And we built IDEM for one simple reason, because as marketeer, we realized that the traditional programmatic supply chain was and still is incredibly inefficient. It has lacked complete transparency. And in order to deliver results for our clients, we needed to be in control of the entire aspect of media buying. And we found in Biswax uh, the perfect partner to deliver our vision. Um, so can you go in a little bit more detail about what you found when you were analyzing the supply chain? Absolutely. So the key, we had three, three key priorities that we wanted to address with our solution. The first one was building something that was truly revolutionary in terms of how we, can, we could ensure the privacy of our consumer while reaching them with our ads. And that basically means building something that allows us to target people without using any kind of cookie, personal data, uh, fingerprint, nothing of the sort. And we needed a way to analyze the open RTB stream data to choose specific targeting tools, mainly based on contextual data and device, generic device data to target those. Second concern that we had was transparency. We know that most commercial DSP, on top of their existing tech fee, they also take a significant hidden margin before passing the B2B SSP. That does, of course, have an additional take rate. And this is clearly in contradiction with the key major objective of any marketeer, and that is reaching people at scale. So the less fee you pay, the more people you're going to reach, the better result you're going to bring. And Having the Biswax DSP on our end with a very simple SaaS pricing and then building on our SSP to be directly connected with the publisher we're looking for was the perfect combo for this. And last one is like the coronation of the first two points. Because we were in control of the entire delivery infrastructure, we were able to leverage a partnership with Cloudflare to build it to be fully carbon zero. So our entire SSP ad server ad verification tool are running all your renewable energy, thus giving to our clients a specific guarantee that their ads are not emitting any kind of uh, carbon emission across the system. And those free needs is what we decided to do, to do and decided to build on Biswax. All right, so that, that's a lot to unpack <laughs> in, this, in this answer. So let's start uh, from the first point. So uh, you're not using any cookies, is that right? Correct. Correct. And this is surprising because if you think about it currently, every single market trend in the advertising space is going forward, finding ways to keep targeting people, uh, even with deprecation of third party cookies or any kind of further restriction, both on a legislative level or from Apple or additional third parties. And we believe that this approach is not sustainable in long, long term. And what we found out that surprisingly enough, if you manage to solve for privacy, you actually are solving most of the programmatic issue. Because if we go back to what I said like 30 seconds ago regarding the core tenant of any marketeer, basically taking a message and showing it to consumer at scale. If you really think about it, all those middlemen, so all the SSP, DSP, they exist for one reason only, and that is for allowing for the transaction of personal data. Because the core proposition of programmatic is that you can reach the right audience at the right time at scale across the web to every single website in existence. Now, our idea was let's remove all the personal data. We don't care about cookies, we care about context. This allows us to, on one end, to remove all the supply chain. So that's alone unlock double the actual working media from relying on traditional tools. 
that instead of using the long tail of programmatic, hoping that uh, delivering your ads uh, on a million different domains are safe, we can be focused on picking only the couple thousand of publishers that we care about, that they really exist, they are not made for advertising, and their quality of event is excellent, and be directly connected with them. By doing that, we can ensure brand safety for our clients. And in addition, this has also have a benefit to dramatically reducing ad fraud because you don't need to basically follow around cookies because, of course, most fraudsters know that if they have a bot that visit a brand website doing specific high-value auction like adding something to a card or starting a lead process, they're going to be retargeted with very high CPM across the web. By not doing that, we can ensure that we are spending the money in the most possible efficient way. So if you connect everything together, you have a system that deliver double the amount of reach and impression for the same budget. It can do targeting a scale with our AI that instead of leveraging cookie and the user data, leverage context and genetic device data. And we can also ensure that every single domain where ads will appear has been already vetted by a human being at some point to make sure that our entire inventory is the best possible that we can get. We can get. Again, a lot, a, a lot in here. I, I want to um, pick on the supply point uh, in a little more detail, just because beeswax works um, a little different from from traditional DSPs, uh, and it allows you to curate your supply. Can you talk a little bit more on how that helps you, um, and also how you manage to add on uh, your anti fraud filters to the bid requests? Absolutely. And that's, uh, if I may, the key reason why we chose Beeswax. It is kind of open access to all the data in real time to build our technology on top of it. And this is a main point of difference with traditional solution, because if you buy any kind of other DSP, you do have a lot of buttons, a lot of settings, but most of the time those settings don't actually do anything. There is a lot of discrepancy or leakage between what you actually set as a targeting setting in a DSP and what you actually get at the end and all the different tools and settings you can use to restrict the kind of domain or website where your ads appear, they are not really working. With Beeswax, we leverage a feature called uh, the Augmentor. The Augmentor is a feature unique to Beeswax that allows us to process every single impression before the builder runs. So we are connected to the full OpenRTB stream the Augmentor can process and reach and identify any kind of pattern and those impression, and then make sure that those additional fields are available in our DSP for inclusion or exclusion. The inclusion part is very simple. We use it for uh, contextual. So for every URL that we see, we have a very large uh, database where we can assign the right context. Exclusion means uh, removing every single impression out of the bitstream that we are not 100% sure is truly delivered to a human being. And the number of impressions that we are filtering out with this very strict approach is staggering. Give it or take it about 70 to 75% of the impression available in open market do not pass our checks. We know that probably some of those 75% that we block are actually uh, real impression but we prefer to have a very strict approach in filtering because there are so many inventory available out there that makes no sense to not have very restrictive filtering. And um, can you give an example of what filters um, advertisers could apply if they were using the ADEM DSP? Absolutely. So, for example, they could exclude every single impression delivered on an IP address owned by uh, data centers because clearly there are no real people inside the data center. Some of them are, mostly for work-related reasons, not the couple of billions that seem to be appear if you look at the OpenRTB stream. They can exclude all the residential proxies. Those are the network of apps generating fake bit requests in the background. So they are actual impression delivered to real devices, but those real devices are never shown ads to anybody. They can detect and remove, for example, I don't know if that had happened to any of you, but you visit the website uh, and there is the same ads all over the place in seven different formats. Uh, with our system, we built a way to ensure that we bid only once per page, so without uh, uh, basically wasting the budget on seven impressions on the same page. There is uh, a many different settings that we can enable. One of the best ones 
it's the most simple. What we do, we ensure that uh, the detail inside the OpenRTV request actually makes sense. Because sometimes uh, any kind of fraudulent activity, they are just lazy. Because they know mm -hmm. that uh, not a lot of people are checking for those. So you can immediately check that, for example, in a single impression, there is a discrepancy between the declared domain and the actual page URL of the impression. And if that happens, that's clearly a suspicious sign that somebody forgot about it. Or sometimes you get impression whose domain is example.com, not a <laughs> website. Might be just a misconfiguration of the publisher side, must be something more challenging. But still, when you receive a 300 billion impression per day, you can be quite choosy. You know, just removing everything that isn't great. But this is something not possible without the kind of integration that these works that give us to access. Yeah, th th this is actually uh, really, really interesting. And um, would you say uh, all your advertisers use this kind of filters? Yeah, one thing that we did, we built a, a thing called DSP Enforcer. It's like uh, from an old Robocop movie from the 80s. It's a tool that every five minutes uh, check every single line item across our entire uh, seat and they enforce uh, the, those augmenter segment to make sure that none of those impressions are actually available to be bought inside the builder. So on one hand, we build uh, the segment, we make sure that they work in production, and then we deploy them at scale to make sure that 100% of our clients are actually protected and none of them are getting this kind of impression in their bitstream. And sometimes if you try to remove the filters, so you're gonna receive an email from the DSP enforcer telling that, this is not something that you should be doing. You're going to get bad impression with signature VDSP enforcer. This would have been really useful uh, in my in my trading days. Um, but yeah. <laughs> and um, talking a bit more about your advertisers, what kind of what kind of customers do you have, uh, or who's your typical customer? Absolutely. So they are basically split in half. We have all very large enterprise corporation. So they are basically running multi-million dollars budget and they have very specific accepting requirements and they are just trusting us for the kind of additional quality of impression you can deliver the result they are getting. Or on the other hand, we have a couple of startups on board. Okay. Smaller clients, they proceed in pure self service. They log in on the platform, they can pay with credit card or media. They have all the settings at their disposal, knowing that they are getting the best return for the investment on the system. And we are basically open to both kinds of customer. The enterprise one are usually getting a hybrid approach where they have access to the platform, plus our client service team is helping them actually deliver their brief. The smaller clients, the startups is mostly self-service with occasional support for any kind of specific request they might have. Yeah, and I, and I think that's another uh, unique feature uh, on the market from Beeswax, the, the flexibility of having mm -hmm. Um, this uh, double approach uh, for our customers to both have uh, managed services uh, and also to give uh, direct access to the to the DSP. And um, so, apart from this feature, um, in general, how have you found onboarding with Beeswax? Uh, I know you mentioned data augmenter. I know you've been extensively using uh, our documentation. Can you talk us a little bit more about that? Absolutely. Now, it seems that, of course, I'm going to say only good thing about Beeswax because <laughs> I'm a Beeswax webinar. This is not true. Great to know that uh, I am very frank in my world, but frankly, Beeswax support, Beeswax engineer team are the best one in the market. We work with many ad tech companies from mainly from SSP, connecting our OpenRT integration, and we never see such a best in class support, both in terms of quality and timing that we get from Beeswax. And this is frankly something that you cannot evaluate before buying the product. You're going to only discover it after like six or eight months of working together. But it's truly a game changer in terms of what you can actually deploy and work together. And this is clearly in opposition with the usual support that you get from other vendors. But at best, there is a chat with misinformed people or an email where you can send something and hope for the best in three to four business days. That that is that is true. We do we do pride ourselves with with um, our well human <laughs> at least uh, support, um, and yeah, I know we we've been working really closely together over the past uh, year and a bit, uh, and it's just great to see um, how you progressed uh, in your journey 
uh, from the first days with beeswax to where we are now. Um, so you started off uh, with the DSP only. Uh, let's now talk about the ADEM uh, SSP as well. Absolutely. The second to last piece of the puzzle, because our idea is rebuilding the entire supply chain. So when we start working, we were using the Biswap DSP with third party SSP. We know that also the third party SSP was going to take their take rate, and sometimes the quality of their inventory wasn't up to our standard. So what we decided to do is build our own SSP with all the filter I mentioned before already integrated. This SSP is connected via a prebit, so either building with the key publisher that we are working with, we can ensure that it's only going to receive on our end the highest possible quality inventory. And this also helps us achieve our carbon zero goal, because the quicker we can stop any kind of impression that we know we are not going to process, the less resource and energy consumption we're going to have across the entire ecosystem. Yeah, and this is actually something we've been uh, asked uh, in the past couple of months more and more, like the actual carbon impact of, of digital campaigns. So it's great to see um, that you're working towards this goal. Um, so, okay, we talked about the DSP, we talked about the SSP. Now let's move on to <laughs> the actual title of this webinar. So how are you applying artificial intelligence uh, in the ADEM DSP? Absolutely. So, first of all, every time we spoke about artificial intelligence, that's a fancy way to say math and statistic, but AI is all the rage, especially these days, so it's even better to speak about AI. What we did with AI was something incredibly simple, because for every single AI model, you basically need a lot of data. And BizWise gives give us a lot of data, because we, given that we have access to the OpenRTB stream, we can collect the auction log that tells us basically everything that happened in the market. This is the entirety of the impression available for us to be bought in any kind of given time window. Then, we of course, need to decide what to buy and how much to bid. And in order to do so, what we decided to do, we built our own, let's call it a privacy-friendly script that runs on our customer website. It's a very simple piece of code. It doesn't collect cookie or personal data. It just tell us um, aggregate information regarding uh, the generic characteristic of whomever did a conversion on a website. So for example, we get uh, the generic uh, kind of device. So it's a mobile versus desktop, uh, the make, Samsung versus Apple, the specific software release, IS 15 versus 16. Then we get additional parameter, the kind of browser, the approximate location looking at the IP address. So at least the first three octets, not the fourth, because the fourth we cannot look at it for obvious privacy reasons. We then enhance this data set with additional data. For example, from the device making model, we can extract the price of the device and the date release. From the approximate geolocation, we can extract the weather data. Because some of our clients are selling products that are extremely sensitive to the kind of weather that are out there, like swimmer. And what we do, we build a model to process all those data sets and give us a result. Uh, technically speaking, we call it a Biswax bid model. So something that we can upload to Biswax, telling Biswax for every single specific uh, set of combination between type of device, location, etc., etc., precisely how much to bid. So what we are building is a way to very quickly, literally in a matter of minutes, collect the data that we receive in real time from our customer build the best possible AI model that doesn't need any kind of privacy, uh, privacy uh, well, it's only run on privacy first data, upload the model back to Biswax and then run immediately the campaign. And we can do that uh, and measure the uplift in a matter of minutes. And that's truly something amazing. Instead of a usual approach of running a traditional DSP, extracting the data in a gigantic Excel spreadsheet to try to fix it somehow, send it to the data team. The data team is going to provide back some suggestion. A trader needs to go to the DSP. They need to press all the buttons, all the settings to input those uh, specific details inside. This is fully automated. It works at scale by default for every single advertiser that we onboard on, on the DSP. Amazing. Yeah, there's just so much you can do once once you have access to to all the data in the bit stream, and then you can expand uh, with more and more. Um, and we've got... Think about it. Uh, <laughs> if you think about it, one key part of this is because we are not paying the hidden DSP margins, uh, we have a way more impression to test different hypotheses ideas. 
And this is also a key part of why running AI on this box is way better than running on any other platform. Amazing. And uh, with all of this, um, can you share like what kind of results uh, you're, you're seeing for your clients compared to maybe other DSPs or other campaigns that you've run with uh, traditional models? Absolutely. Um, I'm not going to name names because, of course, we are technically under NDA regarding the data. But we recently tested uh, our implementation against uh, a traditional DSP that I'm not going to name. And the result has been great. On uh, the cost per conversion that they measured was about a third of the competing DSP. This is uh, with the traditional approach using audience based data versus uh, our privacy first approach. This is for a conversion campaign. For awareness and um, consideration campaign, the results are fantastic because you don't need to wait. You start the campaign, you literally look on your clock for one hour, you come back to the user interface, you can see that on the same placement of the same domain, you're paying CPM at the half, then you're paying on another platform, you're getting immediately the kind of result that you want. And if you look at a more consideration KPI, like for example, CTR, you actually see in a higher CTR just because our AI start optimizing the best possible combination to drive those results. And this is truly something that we love about it because we knew many years ago when we started to work in this sector that we needed to build something that didn't require personal data to drive performance. And now we are seeing that this vision at scale is actually working as intended. Exactly, and that's where the market is going uh, anyway. So good to be at the forefront of that. Um, fi final question before we wrap up. Um, so the past year has been amazing. You've been doing so many things. What's next for you? What, where do you see ADEM in the next 12 months? So the next 12 months is going to be focused on the US expansion. We started there with a couple of clients. We see that the market is significantly larger than uh, the European market. That's of course. Uh, a very easy discovery. We didn't need to do that in order to discover that. But the key part that we are seeing at the US market, uh, there is more awareness regarding the specific pitfall and issue that we are addressing. So we see that there is more awareness regarding how all the different middlemen are taking out their fees and how our solution can actually help halt those fees. We see more awareness regarding the actual carbon cost of programmatic advertising. Uh, this is a staggering amount due to the incredible amount uh, of middlemen, cookies, syncing, data collection, processing. And we know that we can just propose uh, to those advertisers to simply drop everything and choose something else. And the fact that with our solution, they are getting better results, uh, even though they are not connecting and not processing all this data. This is something that we truly going to scale the next 12 months. Wow, that, that's great. Uh, I look forward to, to seeing uh, your US expansion. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for telling us more about uh, what you do with Beeswax and uh, all the different enhancements that you were able to add um, to like the traditional DSP functionalities. Um, thank you so much. And Pleasure if you... Fine. If anyone has any questions for us, uh, we won't be able to answer them here, but feel free to send us an email. Um, you can email me at greta at beeswax.com. Um, and Giovanni, if you want to give your email. Yeah, they can email me at gs at item.com. Thank you for joining. Thank you, everybody. Have a lovely day.